thanks everyone for coming to our presentation today. We're going to be talking about some collaborative research that was done between State Farm and SAS. This specific research was focused on how we could use mach machine vision as a way to look at photos of policyholders' dashboards and read the odometer on them. Today, myself and Kedar are just going to talk you through some of the research that was done, as well as some of the results we got out of that. To start out the agenda for today, I'm going to talk to you more about what the goal of this research was and how we went about solving that, and then get into some of the details of the pipeline we built, as well as the two specific machine vision models. Then Keto is going to give you a bit about the performance of the combined, combined pipeline, as well as some additional insurance-related machine vision projects we think would be fun to research. To get into the project goal, the overall goal was just, we have these photos that we might receive from our policyholders, photos of their dashboards, and we wanted to build a pipeline that could take those photos and read the odometer on them. From an insurance perspective, you can imagine that the mileage that a car drives might be something that is useful for determining the premium for someone or determining if you should underwrite them differently or not renew them. It might also be nice for validation of any sort of other data source that you're getting. For example, any vehicle telematics you have in that car might be useful to validate the mileage you're getting out of that vehicle telematics and compare it against uh, the actual odometer of the vehicle. We wanted to come up with some automated way you could take a photo and read that odometer, because you can certainly imagine doing that through something like a human manually reading those photos would be cost prohibitive, but maybe we can build a model that could do it automatically and make this much more practical. As we were getting into this, though, we foresaw quite a few challenges that make this research interesting, but also made it pretty difficult to get through. First one is just trying to figure out how do we even localize the region of the odometer. A vehicle dashboard has a lot of information on it. If you think about how you get any information about how a vehicle is running, it's usually on the dashboard. And so there's all these different symbols that might confuse a machine vision model when it's trying to figure out where on this, dash, where on this dashboard it should really be looking. In the example we have over on the right, you'll see that the actual odometer right in the middle of the picture, but the model that we were building at the time got confused by part of the speedometer up above. As another piece of complexity, the data that we were using for this project has a lot of variability in it. We are getting photos from our policyholders that could be from any type of vehicle. The quality of the photos could be very high quality or very low quality. In the examples I show over on the right, you'll see all the images have very small odometers to them. You can probably barely even see that an odometer exists at all in that dashboard. Um, and we need to try and figure out how can we build a pipeline that could handle this wide range of different types of odometers. Another complexity related to that is the model years of the different vehicles that we might see coming through our data. There are many different model years out on the roads these days, and some vehicles might have these mechanical odometers, like the one I'm showing here. Others might have more high-tech looking digital odometers. So from a machine vision standpoint, it's going to be difficult for a model to learn that wide range of different types of odometers and be able to detect all of them. And then finally, even after you detect that odometer, you now are down to the normal digit detection problem. So even after we've detected it, we still have to deal with possibly mistaking ones for sevens, threes for eights, or some specific problems for our odometer readings, like the six here shown in the example where part of the digit is cut off, or just being able to read both mechanical type odometers as well as digital type odometers. So those are some of the challenges. Now let's talk about the general pipeline. Um, to start out, we have some raw image that we're going to receive from our policyholders. They're going to send us just this image of their dashboard, and we really have no promises of what that image might look like. It might be really high quality and just have just the odometer in it, or it might be something like this image I'm showing here, where it's got the whole dashboard in it with all these different numbers, and we needed to figure out where in that dashboard the odometer is. Once we have that photo, we're going to resize it to a fixed 
uh, width and height so that we can feed it into our first model. Our first model then is just going to look at that image and make a detection for where in the image the odometer is located. That model we'll talk about in a little bit more detail in a moment, but it's a tiny YOLO V2 and it's just going to make detections of odometers. Whichever one it has the most confidence in, that's the one that we're going to feed forward to the rest of our pipeline as our detection of an odometer. Once we make that detection, we're then going to crop the image. Just based off of wherever we detect an odometer, we'll add a little bit of padding to that and crop the image to that region. So now we have this tiny image that hopefully contains an odometer in it. We'll then resize that back up to a fixed uh, width and height so that we can feed it into our next model, which is another object detection model. And that second model then is gonna have the task of trying to detect each of those digits in the odometer. So it will go through each, detect all of them, as well as label them as zero to nine, at which point we can just take those labelings, convert it over to an array of digits. And then the easiest part of this whole pipeline, zero, one, five, three, six, well, that's actually 1,536. So that's the pipeline where we're able to go from a raw image that we really have no promises about what, where the odometer might be or what its value is, and we're able to go all the way to a reading of that odometer. Let's dig into this first model then. The first model is focused on odometer detection. Its job, just spot where the odometer might be in this image, as well as give us some amount of confidence for how likely it is that it has actually detected an odometer at that location. We then use that confidence in the case where maybe there's two or three different odometers detected. Whichever one it's most confident about is the one that we'll use for the remainder of our pipeline. This model, as I mentioned earlier, it's a tiny YOLO v2. To build it, we had an instance out on AWS uh, working with four GPUs. And over the course of this three-week period, we just did a random grid search of uh, various hyperparameters for that model to try and focus in on the performance we were looking for. After that three-week period, then, we selected a champion model. That champion model, we were pretty happy with the performance of. Overall, for 88.3% of the validation photos that we fed into it, it was able to detect the odometer. And then opposite that, 13.3% uh, of the detections it made were inaccurate. As a note, the reason those two numbers don't add up to 100 is, again, sometimes the model will detect multiple odometers in a photo. One might be a false positive. The other would hopefully be the actual odometer found in the photo. So that's the first model. Let's get into a demo, then, of what that model looks like in action. What I'm showing now is a random sampling of 10 photos that were run through this model. These were all validation photos, so the model did not train on these images. And what you'll see is, in general, the model does a pretty good job of actually properly detecting where the odometer is in the photo. There is one example, though, that I want to freeze on. This is one example where the model, I would say, I would classify this as a failure. You'll see that it has two different detections. One of them truly is the odometer. However, the other one is just the word standard. And unfortunately, what you'll see is the confidence level of the word standard is actually higher than the odometer. So this one I would classify as a failure. And it really provides a good example of where this model can fall short. What we found in browsing through some of its mistakes is it often gets tripped up on tightly packed together characters or type, tightly packed together numbers. And that seems to be a key way that it tries to detect an odometer. So these types of things where you might just have a dense word as part of your dashboard, that's a common way that it can get confused. So that's our first odometer detection model. At this point, I'm going to pass it over to Kidar, who's going to talk you through the remainder of our pipeline. Thank you very much, Tyler. So uh, I'm Kedar Prabhudesai, and um, along with Tyler, um, uh, we helped build the system to detect odometer reading. So I'll be walking through the second part uh, of this pipeline, where now we have taken the odometer detection results and trying to detect digits within the odometer. So let's go back to our general pipeline. 
so far we have a tiny yolo v2 model which is detecting where uh, in the dashboard image the odometer is now if we look at uh, just the raw output of the odometer region uh, many times the bounding box uh, around the odometer is is really tight around the initial and the last digit which in this case uh, you can see um, results in clipping of the initial and the last part of the uh, of the image uh, so we did an initial uh, image padding operation where we just expand the bounding box region uh, so as to include some additional part of the image and we use that um, additional part of the bounding box as the odometer crop now on this odometer crop uh, we train our second model, uh, which is uh, again a YOLO V2 deep learning uh, model. But this time, this model is trained on detecting the digits uh, from zero to nine. Now, uh, as you have already seen, uh, there is a lot of variability in the uh, dashboard images, and also there is a lot of variability in the numbers. So we couldn't just use the images that we already had uh, uh, in order to train a robust enough model that can account for all these variabilities. So in addition to the images of the dashboard that we got, we also added uh, around 33,000 images from an open source data set. This open source data set is the Street View House Numbers data set, which, um, uh, which is abbreviated as SVHN. And this adding this additional data set does help train the model in a more robust way so that it can more accurately detect all these digits. So we trained the YOLO V2 model to detect digits. And what we observed was many times the model had a tendency to detect multiple digits for a given digit that's present in the odometer. So we just performed an operation of non-max suppression where whenever there are multiple bounding boxes predicted for a given digit, we just choose the bounding box which has the highest probability. Right, And uh, so then finally, once we have these digits detected, we can just concatenate the outputs and complete the digit string, which is corresponding to the, uh, to the actual odometer reading. So now let's look at some of these results, uh, a demo of the digit recognition model. Um, so here you can see uh, and hopefully appreciate the huge variability in the fonts of the digits, in the color of the digits, uh, the color of the background. But if you observe the digit recognition model is actually doing a pretty good job in detecting the individual digits from the odometer region. So we can say that successfully, we were able to incorporate the open source data set and build a robust enough digit recognition model. As with all AI-based models, no model is perfect, right? So of course, uh, we had instances where the model did not work very well. And here are some examples where the model was not able to predict the digits accurately. And some of these images, you can see that they are quite challenging. Some images have a very blurry digits. The contrast of the background and the foreground is for some images not great. Some images have a rotated uh, odometers and so on. So of course, the, the model wasn't perfect and there were some cases where the model could not detect the digits accurately. So how can we quantify these, uh, these bad performers and quantify the evaluation of the uh, digit recognition model? So in order to do that, we used a metric called the digit error rate. Now, uh, this metric essentially accounts for the three kinds of errors that can occur while recognizing these digits. Uh, and these errors are illustrated here. So the first error that can occur is what's called a substitution based error, where you can see in the image, the first digit uh, is misclassified as a three where the true digit is an eight. So it's substituted an eight with a three. So that's one kind of error. The second kind of error that can occur is a deletion based error where the model completely fails to detect a digit where there is a digit, where in this case, it failed to detect one. And finally, there can also be an insertion style error where the model erroneously inserts digits where there are no digits present in the, in the odometer region. Now, the uh, digit error rate combines these three kinds of errors and then 
divides it by the total number of digits present in the odometer to calculate the digit error rate for a given uh, uh, for a given image. So um, we evaluated the performance uh, of this the entire pipeline from the odometer detection model to the digit recognition model on an uh, on a holdout set of 989 images and what we are showing here is a histogram of the digit error rate uh, over those 989 images now uh, the first observation looking at the chart uh, of the the histogram is that the majority of the mass of the histogram is focused over the value of zero which is a good thing because remember this is a digit error rate and lower the error the better is the performance so let's look at some uh, some individual numbers so of the 989 images uh, 65 percent of the images that is 648 had zero percent digit error rate which means for 65 percent of the images the recognition model was spot on and it match the true odometer reading perfectly now if we allow if we appreciate that the model can have some errors and we set that threshold to be around 40 percent uh, we see that around 84 uh, percent of the images had a digit error rate of less than or equal to 40 percent and then finally 380 images had a digit error rate of greater than 40 percent uh, now, if we just look at the total digit error rate, that is for all the 989 images, there were a total of around 5,400 digits uh, and the total digit error rate for those is 17.53%, which, uh, uh, which can be distributed as uh, the number of deletion errors were the maximum, around 600, followed by substitution and insertion errors. So what can we conclude from these results? Recall that the overall goal of this project is to uh, automate the process of detecting the odometer readings so as to reduce the human effort that would be required to do so. Now, based on these results, we can say that uh, for 65% of the images, that is 648, would require no manual intervention, uh, no human input in order to determine whether the user has submitted uh, an accurate odometer reading. Um, and of course, for the remainder where the digit error rate is really high, that is around 380 images, that's where you would require some manual intervention in order to verify whether the user has submitted accurate odometer readings. So that's a huge uh, reduction in the human effort required to validate the, uh, the odometer readings that the users have submitted. So to summarize, um, we have developed a system that automatically extracts odometer readings from vehicle dashboard images using two deep learning models, one to isolate the odometer and another to recognize digits. The odometer detection model has an accuracy of 88.3% with a false positive rate of 13.3%, uh, whereas the digit recognition model has an overall digit error rate of 17.53%. I highly recommend referring to our paper in the proceedings for additional details about the methodology and more results. Um, in this work, we have just demonstrated one application of computer vision uh, to, uh, to solve a specific challenge that can come up with insurance companies, but there are other applications that insurance companies can use computer vision to solve problems. And here is a list of just some of them. For example, uh, you can use computer vision to detect vehicles that belong to specific rideshare companies like Uber or Lyft. Um, similarly, uh, you can have a computer vision model to identify reappearing claims um, uh, also which is which can really help automate the process of processing the reappearing claims um, you can also use computer vision to identify damages which have already been submitted in previous claims and finally uh, you can use computer vision to identify specific damaged parts in a vehicle uh, to automatically determine how much a claim should be um, so here are just some applications where insurance company can have hugely benefit from, uh, from computer vision. So that concludes our uh, presentation and we'd be happy to take any additional questions. Thank you.